When you talk about the addition in Mama Shelter, although their, uh, their forward-facing image is boutique, uh, they are actually uh, part of larger brands. You know, the addition is actually a Marriott brand. Mama Shelter is actually an Accor brand. Uh, so these two uh, have this uh, sort of uh, perception of, of boutique, but in the end they have the DNA of a, of a larger uh, hotel, and, and especially when you think of the number of keys as well. I mean, traditionally, uh, a boutique hotel is something like 80 keys or less. Uh, these properties that we're talking about now are, you know, 400 uh, keys plus, plus minus. So, uh, you know, we have been talking a long time in the hotel industry about, you know, these boutique hotel brands coming. Uh, and I think although they're not truly boutique, they are a precursor maybe to what will ultimately be the, the true essence of boutique. Now, why haven't we seen boutique hotels uh, here in the region? Well, uh, for, for starters, the, the, the price of entry uh, here is, is quite high. Uh, you know, feasibility of hotels are, is very simple. It's, you know, room rates and occupancy and how much you can charge for F&B, that gets you your return on investment. Uh, Dubai is an expensive place, land values are high, construction values are, uh, are high. So to get the numbers to kind of stack up, uh, you need some supplementary, uh, you know, revenue uh, streams and that tends to be only something that larger hotels and larger operators can satisfy. If you also think about uh, the sort of essence of boutique hotels around the world, uh, these tend to be uh, independent, uh, singly owned. Uh, they tend to be uh, sometimes, you know, uh, maybe more family, you know, operated and, and they tend to be actually uh, more for, uh, let's say, uh, ego than they are for uh, financial uh, benefits. Why? Because if you have a 10-key boutique hotel in somewhere like Puglia in the south of Italy, uh, you know, you're not living uh, off of the revenue uh, of that hotel. It, it is obviously just something in your wider portfolio uh, that um, is, is maybe more for uh, your passion and interest as opposed to uh, a commercial uh, venture. So uh, hotels here uh, are still very much a commercial venture and, and although there is uh, certainly some ego in projects here, uh, they have to stack up in terms of return on investment and, and the boutique hotel um, as a model, the Ada Key or less, independently operated and owned, um, doesn't necessarily deliver uh, on that commercial, uh, commercial promise. So uh, it is starting, but I would argue that it's not here just yet. A hotel that's actually come uh, on the scene uh, that, that's made a huge splash is the Renaissance Hotel uh, in, uh, in Business Bay. Now, Renaissance globally is yeah, well, historically, they've been like more business sort of, you know, city hotel and they had their purpose. It's like nice, but nothing particular, particularly interesting. We were talking about boutique hotels uh, earlier. And if you ask me which, you know, hotel is, uh, you know, feels like it's the most sort of boutique where they have vibrant F&B, you know, a nice nightlife, uh, you know, a sort of, uh, you know, a segment of the socio-cultural uh, dimension, which is a little bit of the in crowd, you know, where, where corporate events will be held with, you know, brands that you like. It, it's the Renaissance, actually. So. You know, I, I really enjoy uh, going there, and you know, and again, it's less of, you know, it's less about the image and, and about design. You know, when I when I measure the quality of a hotel, of course, I'm an architect, and I look at the aesthetics, and if it's beautiful, fantastic. But there are plenty of uh, hotels that are beautiful, and then once I went to experience those those hotels, they didn't stack up. Hotels are about that holistic experience. So when you uh, measure a hotel, and as a hotelier or a hotel designer, hospitality designer. You need to to measure all of these uh, all of these factors. So if if you ask me one, which is always an impossible uh, question to uh, to answer, I would say the Alilo Hotel in Uluwatu in Bali, and uh, and why? Exceptional design, absolute seamless integration between architecture, landscape, interior. The atmosphere and feeling uh, in that place is so visceral uh, and so emotionally charged that uh, it is impossible to, uh, to resist and to say, this is not a, a good place to be. Now forget what you think about the aesthetics and the food or the service, which by the way, they are exceptional there, which all helps because you know, we as designers can only do uh, so much. You know, we can provide you with that uh, image, that operational efficiency, but in the end, uh, the operator has to provide that exceptional service and that, and that one-off bespoke experience to say, this is a fantastic stay. Uh, and, and they do things like that there. Little things like you arrive and the bags, when they go to your room, they have uh, beautiful leather baggage tags on them with a little handwritten note inside. So it's a very personalized 
uh, service when you leave, if you've, you've been talking uh, to one of the uh, staff about a particular like or interest, they give you a little gift in the end that maybe speaks specifically to that. So they, they make it feel uh, all about you. So, uh, you know, any hotel that blends uh, design seamlessly, holistically with landscape, culture, environment, celebrates view, promotes wellness, and also has an exceptional service, this is the measure of a, of a quality hotel. And you have lots of beautiful, beautiful hotels, but maybe they don't stack up in, in all of those areas, so they're a perfect combination.